so it's all about African artifacts there's so much taboo behind African artifacts and I don't know why these days when it's got to do with African culture artifacts spirituality because of the fact that these practices are so deep oftentimes spiritual and as well mimics nature because of the misinformation and misunderstanding most people find it scary i don't understand why because african spirituality oftentimes i mean the ancient african spirituality is representative of nature it mimics nature and how nature is so we're going to be talking about the african artifacts to be able to make it as simple as possible for you look at it from this perspective of the present way of living these days we have artificial intelligence that is representative of so many things that we do today this artificial intelligence is representative of humans is representative of nature animals the earth and the world at large everywhere you go presently you find pictures you find videos of this and that and everything and the world we live today one cannot do without having a picture or video of something that they are relating with or vice versa you see when people go dining they often take a picture of what they are doing their activities with friends and families whether they are swimming whether they are having fun or they are having a sad day there's always a picture or video representing such so you look at it like so with the ancient african artifacts in ancient african culture whatever the people were involved in they represented it with the artifact in terms of sculpturing in terms of pottery in terms of mask jewelries you name it nature itself the animals these ancient africans or we can call them our ancestors represented everything that they did into their sculpture into these artifacts that was how it was and most other nations mind you were influenced by this way of life for example the europeans so in the time when africa flourished most nations visited africa and saw these artifacts and were influenced by them in the area of taking that same culture and relating it to their own culture so today you look around the world and you see different paintings that are made and are being sold at expensive prices again in the ancient african culture the artifacts were not just used economically they had deeper meaning and use for them for example they were used as a form of communication between people and for example in festivals and as well for supernatural forces in terms of communicating with the ancestors so oftentimes the previous ancestors that lived were made into sculptures and used as a means of communication with those same ancestors once they leave the air so once they've passed on because of the value placed on such ancestor it is the belief that that same ancestor is able to protect us these are not 
seen as gods but they are seen as representing the previously lived ancestor so these sculptures were made and prayed over and used as a medium of representation so it was a form of representation or shall we say imagery of that same ancestor but like i said it was not just sculptures there were other artifacts like mask jewelry and so on jewelries were used depending on how wealthy that african was so for example if that african was so rich whatsoever jewelry that african had acquired was kept as valuables which is currently still being done and practiced by other cultures as well for example when you take um, a person like michael jackson may he so rest in peace when he lived he had things that belonged to him and so when he passed on those things that belonged to him were not chunked away they were not thrown away because of the value placed on michael jackson i mean come on it was michael jackson so you could not afford to throw those belongings of his away so those belongings of his remained valuable just as when he was alive and they were kept specially and sometimes sold and passed on from one person to another so those belongings still and will continue to be of great value because of the person it belonged to when he or she was alive that was the same way the ancient african culture operated and valued these artifacts so it is found that pre-colonization one of the ways of trade was trade by butter when africa was attacked by the colonizers because of the terms and conditions attached to a new type of trade presented to the africans at that time most of these artifacts were taken away from africa and the africans as way of punishment because they were not cooperating with the new terms and condition of the new type of trade hence like we all know or presumptuously expected to know <laughs> most of these ancient african artifacts were stolen and taken away to museums around the world most especially in the western museums and some of these artifacts still remain there today although some countries have returned few of the artifacts but this is to tell you how valuable these artifacts were for other nations to have taking so much interest in taking away this artifact from africa and the africans it belonged to and most of these artifacts as well according to archaeologists are as old as 20,000 years yes you heard me right for example when you look at cars that have been produced probably 40 years ago are of great value and are still being driven today but they are quite expensive and they are actually a form of assets as opposed to being a liability you could imagine the kind of value placed on these same artifacts that are 20,000 years old 10,000 years old 5,000 years old I mean how on earth would you in your right senses throw out such ancient artifacts claiming that they are of old they belong in the past no they are of great value because these are artifacts that are uniquely handmade 
most if not all of these ancient artifacts were handmade with special tools. Unlike what we have today where things are just produced unmasked. That wasn't the case then. Even currently when things are produced by hand, it is more expensive than the ones that are produced unmasked. Why? Because it takes time, greater knowledge and effort to produce them. It takes longer. So because it takes longer, it's painstakingly made. It will be more expensive. So these artifacts are of great value. I mean, greater than we can ever imagine. Like I previously mentioned that most of these artifacts that were produced were not just produced or handmade for economical use only, but for spiritual use as well when these artifacts are made they are preyed on and used as a means of physicality whereby you see the imagery of the ancestor that is being prayed to i mean this practice could be frowned on by many and it is frowned on by many and you wouldn't believe it even by some africans but it's an irony because those who frown against it, who practice other types of religion, also, whether knowingly or unknowingly, do have sculptures representative of most likely ancestors in their religion. Most of the current world religion also have sculptures in their religion. The Christian religion that I am well familiar with do embody sculpture in their religion, most especially the Catholic Church. When you attend the Catholic Church, you see effigies of different ancestors, and the Catholics bow to these effigies. But the same religion says, do not bow to an idol but the question is are they bowing to the idol or the spirit behind the idol and another question is what is the spirit behind that idol whose ancestor behind that idol are you bowing to do you know as a christian invariably it becomes hypocritical really for us to criticize the African spirituality for having all of these artifacts, be it representative imagery of pottery, jewelries, sculptures, and so on. Because all of these other religions also practice it. Why is the African spirituality or African embrace of its sculptures, portraits, artifacts as part of the culture being criticized. Why is it being criticized? If these all other religions are allowed to embrace and use it as a form of practice in their own religion, mind you, the value attached to most of these ancient African artifacts is unbelievably enormous. So I say, as an African, let's embrace our heritage. Let's embrace our culture, the ones that our ancestors left for us to follow. Let's not forget tradition. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you in the next video. Take care now. Bye.